I lost my shoe and everything. Foot got caught. Hey guys, welcome to Wildcat and NI. Uh, this is the start of the Great Glen Canoe Trail. This is day one, so. It's that Wednesday today, so, so we'll wait till we get the, <laughs> the microphone on to a bit more of a chat. But as you can see, we're all set up for getting ready. And getting ready, all the guys are here, and Gary and Jamie's eager to go, eager beavers. <laughs> Everyone else is getting set up. Alright guys, so this is us on the water, we've been on the water for about what? Three hours? Two hours now. And um, it's as we thought, <laughs> pretty wet. And um, we headed at the worst time, I think between 12 and 2 was whenever the, the thunderstorm was at its worst. So we've got we've got pretty wet, um, but it seems to be calming down now and we're, we're making a bit better progress. Um, but aside that there, it's, it's, a pretty, it's pretty beautiful around it. Like. Ah, well, bar that there, you know, for a lot of it we didn't see because just kind of looking at my knees and paddling in the hope that we'd get somewhere. But, it's pretty strong. Strong yeah, um, it's been, been pretty strong headwinds for the past hour and a half and some real heavy showers in amongst that there. Uh, but we knew, we, we knew watching the forecast that was going to be the case and bar every single sign from the boat to, to here had, oh, yeah. it, had it up. Yellow so, <laughs> yellow well war. Uh, I can't say that. Yellow weather warning. Yellow of heavy rain and flooding. <laughs> Yellow weather warning of yeah rain and thunder. Uh, so we kind of knew it was coming, but we're hoping that it clears up for the for the next few days, and we get some some nice calm paddles. Um, but yeah, so far so good. Wet, but enjoying it. Best to get wet in the first day whenever you're nice and fresh and yeah. excited about what's ahead rather than like three days in whenever you're tired and. Right. Hungry and sitting there like, oh nah, not more water. But we have Iron Brew, we have Haggis, and we have Lauren Ducky, so and, yeah. we're all good. So that's for dinner tonight. And lots of chocolate bars. A monster. That is one of the joys of going on the canoe, is you can just bring a big coal box. Oh, we also have a link. Oh, uh, yes. <laughs> so we do plan to do all five day. That just turned off for me. No, still going. Is it? That's no, still going. <laughs> so yes, we do plan to do all five days, but we are currently nursing a leak on the boat. So we'll kind of see how that goes. Hopefully, if it's something minor, we can repair it tonight. Um, uh, but hopefully, it doesn't get any worse over the next next few days. Yeah. But and hopefully, the wind changes direction so we can get our sail out. Yeah, that would be good too if we could actually use them and save a little bit of time paddling. But yeah, it's Check back again, right here. that's it, we'll catch us in a bit. Alright guys, so that is us at the end of day one. Um, we are now coming into Gerlocky. And um, for any Scottish people that watch our videos, don't laugh at how I say that. Like, that'll probably be quite common throughout the week. But yeah, today was a shorter paddle um, overall, but with the headwind and the weather, it was kind of just get it done to the rough patches. And then there was some nice bits to be fair, but it was it was a pretty strong headwind. This is Portage 1, complete for them. We took the lazy option and dragged the boat up the hill. 
Who was it? Yes, good. That's a lot of Hey guys, we're just at the first camp, so we are uh, first day's camp, uh, Gerlaki, so it is. Uh, we got here at four o'clock, we did think it would continue on a bit further, so we did, but it was wet and windy and the wind was against us, so we decided to uh, set up camp here, I'm going to show you this camp now, so it's one of the, the wilds or the non-commercial campsites available on the lock. And, uh, but yeah, it's windy and it's wet, but the wind's actually was towards the day as it was, so a bit of a slog as it was, but the wind's hopefully going to change overnight and go with us tomorrow, so that should be a bit better. Everyone's a bit wet, and we're all just going getting showers and getting warmed up. I'm in the, the One Tigress Smoky Hut tonight, so I'm with some off-brand mesh in her, so it's, it's pretty good to us. I'll go and show you around some of the other guys' setups nice well. Well Gary, Gary's got the full <laughs> look at this here, he's got the full clothesline out. Odd pegs. Um, he's brought pegs and everything. Gary's Gary's a dark horse, yeah, look at this here guys. Full clothesline. <laughs> clothesline pegs that works, don't blame him. Gary's in the the Burghai Cairn Gorm too, we think Gary so far. You went last night weren't you? Brilliant, uh, good great, job. Great room. Great wee porch. That's a big size porch, isn't it? Yeah, look at that here. Brilliant, brilliant. And you kept your seat in a bag so it was dry? Yes. Yeah, my seat was left outside the bag, which means it was very much not dry. So, no seat for me tonight. And we have Sam and his green nature hike. One man coffin thing. You know what, it's not terrible like. No, it's not, it's not. But it's just a wet weather, it's not great. I thought I had burst. My air mat ready? My air mat again. Oh wow. And I was sitting there, I was like, this keeps going soft. And I was like, oh, oh no, but I wasn't, the, the out bit was not closed properly. <laughs> this looks like goodness. Well you can see here this is Gerlocky isn't it guys? Yeah Gerlocky. Gerlocky this is where we're camping. That's one of them for say around one of them free camps it is but it's all us. We're all here apart from we've got one friend at the end there it's not us but Ryan's in his two man tent yeah? Yeah. Two man tent. He's went and had a shower. Shower good job. Very warm. Very good. needed. Good good. Might go and join you mate too. Well, not join no, you but not might, <laughs> might follow your footsteps. We're not that close. <laughs> I say uh, I have the one tigress smoky hut, and Chris has got the Polish lavu, and Jamie's got his Lux Peak, which is something similar to the smoky hut, but a lot better quality, from what I can tell from looking inside of it. So, Chris is cooking up a feed as always. Hey guys, how's it going? Maybe sneak peek with a new t-shirt there guys, but we'll show you it tomorrow, so yeah, we all have them, but we haven't got them all at the minute. And PJ's found himself nestled in here in the corner, so he has, not a babby spot. PJ, and there's, this is upper lock, and there's lower lock. Our boat has suffered, well it is an old boat as you know anyway, but it has suffered somewhat of a bit of damage to the bottom which has led us to have a leak small drip probably about two or three litres of water over two or three hours it's not the end of the world apart from the fact that I have to spend my time feet in the water but I do use it anyway okay guys well that a quick run down of camp I'm going to get some food on now so I'm stopped off at a local co-op and got some Scottish breakfast items Lauren haggis black pudding the works you know so I'm going to go make up some breakfast wraps and I'll catch you all later.
morning guys this is the morning of day two and um, we didn't really video any cooking or eating on the guy because it was pretty bog standard stuff porridge all around i think and some breakfast bars for the most part um we're up it's 20 past eight now most people's ready to go cheapers oh look at that there hey uh <clears throat> most of us is ready to go packed up things gonna be the same kind of thing most mornings quick morning up some food on the water game so as we can spend more time at night in the daylight so we'll see we aim to be on the water <coughs> in the next 30 minutes and we'll check back in then well guys we'll just do a bit of duct tape up here because i thought the dams was there as it was but actually we found it along the hole here so let's go sam things here see the hole's nice and hard but there's a bit here in the middle it's obviously water over the years which is kind of soft to the touch and it's just pushed through a little hole so it has there not that actually that little so it's not but it's <laughs> enough so we're going to put on some, not some plastic, but some off scratches and then we'll put a bit of duct tape on for now and then we'll fiberglass and we'll go home, repair when we go home. So hopefully that's will work, so it'll... Alright guys, um, as you've seen there we were repairing a little bit of the boat and we were trying to melt plastic into it uh, but it wasn't very successful and we are about to head off this morning in the next 15-20 minutes so we've just duct taped up. Day two saw us entering Loch Lochy. It was the first lock of the trip after traveling the canal system the previous day. The first hour or so of Loch Lochy had us batting a strong headwind and a bit of waves. So we took the opportunity to stop at a beautiful beach. This gives Jamie a chance to get the drone up and as you can see the scenery is stunning and the lock, although smaller than the other locks later on, is still quite vast. After lunch, we had a short paddle up the canal system before entering Loch Oik. Loch Oik is a smaller loch in comparison to Loch Lochy. On its northern shore, there is the ruins of Invergari Castle, and just in front of that is the shipwreck of the Ela Ban. As you can see, it's quite eerie and quite enjoyable to paddle around. Due to issues with some of the sizes of the campsites along the canal, we find ourselves paddling late into the evening uh, on day two, up past the River Oik into the canal system towards Kytra.
All right, guys, this is us at the start of day three now. Um, we didn't record much last night because we pushed on to Kaitra. Hopefully that's how you say it right. But yeah, we pushed on to there and it was about 9.30 p.m. before we got off the water. It was dark and stuff, so we just kind of get camp set up and get into bed pretty much and then got up early this morning. We tried to get up around 5 a.m. to get the we, some things to fix in the boat, um, but... It was raining, so I think it was about 6.30 that we got up and did a couple of makeshift repairs on the boat. Um, and then we now have the option tonight of going down the river, which has the rapids in it, or going down the canal way. Um, but Chris and a lot of the other guys have never done the rapids before, so they're quite keen to do that there. Um, so we're waiting, a couple of other guys pull in a bit earlier last night, so we're waiting for them to come along and we will decide whether we'll go to the rapids. Uh, well, that's not if we do a canal, maybe a bit of back wind, get the seals up. Yeah, so. so well. But it's just a quick one for now. Whenever we get back in the water, we'll get some more footage again, guys. Alright, guys, see you. Watch, there's a rock under us here. Here? Should go over it, but. Aye. Are we on the We're falling this area down, yeah? Here. Tell me when he turned, Mark. Go. There. Right, they're both left there. Left yep. Oh Jesus, I was jumping. That's just... They're stuck. Right, Mark, there's a rock ahead here. Hello. <laughs> so I think if we both go right, go left or right, help. He turn his turn, turn, turn. Big rock. Right, turn his back. Right, well, just let the water take us. Yep. Right, paddle. Paddle. Cute left there. It was at this moment that he knew he fucked up. At this stage, naturally, the footage got slightly frantic uh chris and pj hit the same route we hit it was uh a bad line an experience but we managed to stay in the boat as you've seen and they didn't unfortunately immediately 
immediately after the boat went over, uh, Sam and myself took our boat over into the AA on the right hand side and Sam got out with the throw line uh, to assist. But fortunately, the summer previous, we spent quite a lot of time falling in at the boat and doing recovery uh, in preparation for this trip. So both Chris and PJLO, not confident in the line, were confident in recovering the boat and bringing it safely under control themselves, as you can see in this footage. Ashi! Brayden, keep the hands up! Sexy! Perfect. Well done. Well done. <laughs> the rest of the river oik was pretty uneventful and we both enjoyed the many rapids that fall, although not as big as the, the one that caught us out. This is where the Caledonian Canal came in and met the River Oik at the entrance to Loch Ness. And this is where we met the other guys who paddled the canal that day at Fort Augustus. No, no, I'm staring us in. Lift it up, lift it up. Fine, Jay. Fine. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the beauty is now, you don't have to paddle, Jay, mate. You don't have to paddle. <laughs> Who's at the front with them? Someone. Uh, I'm uh, just here, so I'll put the camera around. Oh, the GoPro recording, isn't it? Yeah, the GoPro recording, yeah. Guys, everyone smile. I'm smiling, but no. Right, right hold on again. Yeah. Ah, I'm, not missing, I'm not getting Brian. Quite blocked in us, girls and boys. Guys, I'll just leave them. Where am I going? That's, I'm just letting up yes, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> Chris got a kite, he thinks of a kite. <laughs> well, if I grab it, right. Right, stop paddling, Seamus. Pass me the car! I'm gonna buy the S-Way Lucid, but I'll give you the There we go, there's a gust. Hey, you steer, Marlo. Hang up like a helicopter. <laughs> yeah. Boys, 3.8 mile an hour. Yes! 
Three pointer, come on, three point nine. Come on! <laughs> Yo! Come on, come on, three point eight, come on. Four! Yeah! Four, yeah. Four, yeah. Four, boys. We paddled along Loch Ness for five, six miles and stopped at this wonderful campsite for the night. Again, not much footage was taken the night after the adventures of the day. Videos and midges did not go hand in hand. Alright guys, we are now on day four morning. Um yesterday we we pushed on for around day two into Kitra and then a couple of our guys slept in a different place now so we kinda wasted that time in the morning. But we done the rapids. Uh, so we went down the river, Mark, myself, Chris and PJ. Um Maybe by now in this stage of video you've already seen the videos from that there but if we're keeping up for there and then I'll not spoil it. Uh, it was good fun. A uh, bit more technical than I thought but we get we get through it okay um, with a boat with minimum two holes that we that we know of that was leaking that we repaired with uh, some of our baler yesterday morning real quick. Um, held up okay obviously but the rapids is uh, tough enough on it, but yeah, we camped at Log Ness at the Noggy Trailblazer site, um, just up a bit, and it was quite spectacular views. So it was. Everyone's just getting cleared up there now. You can see there's Mark and PJ. Uh, yeah, so we really we got off the water a good time yesterday. I think for about five half five. Had good food. Good, good feed yesterday. We also stopped at Fort Augustus and had a chippy, which you know you can't you can't refuse like. And then we're just heading off a bit earlier tomorrow this morning and trying to make up some lost time. So we will check in later on and see if we were able to catch up that last time. Ryan, fix your hair. Okay. <laughs> we stopped off on this beautiful little beach to have a, a quick lunch. It was signposted of one of Scotland's last incident woodlands and protect it. So we just sat on the beach and made up some noodles etc and didn't intrude in the forest too much. Alright guys, as you can see, we're wrapped up to our with Chris and PJ. Uh, makes the, the vessel very, very stable. As you can see, I can turn around and talk to the camera without really any bother. We're just padding up the second half of Loch Ness now, so we are 
heading to, you won't be able to see it probably in the camera, but Urquhart Castle, just up in front of us. We're heading there now, so we are sending the drone up. And then we're going to try and paddle on to the end of the log tonight, so we are to make up for time yesterday. But look at that air wharf, look at the calm it is. We've got a headwind, but it's not blown too hard, it's not. But it's just so peaceful. It's so dead, there's not even a ripple in the water, so it's not. It's beautiful. Urquhart Castle is a Heritage Scotland site and you have to pay to come off the boats and walk around so, and also there's no drones allowed so we just moved on. After Urquhart Castle, uh, Loch Ness, the headwind got quite strong and actually quite choppy so it did. Uh, the only footage I actually got of that part of the trip actually was corrupt unfortunately uh, but to say the least it was a slog the whole way to the end of Loch Ness and it was a great relief to see the start of the Caledonian Canal Alright guys, we've had a long day, so we have, it's been 7 or 8 hours travel to get back get back to the boat. We didn't quite have time to wrap this video up, or these videos potentially, up at the canal. Um, yeah, so just as always, thank you very much for watching the videos, uh, video or videos, um, and hopefully you enjoyed it. I think we got some good footage this time, and uh, there was definitely some, definitely some good crack in there uh, along the way. Thanks guys. Cheers guys.